There are a lot of people who feel like the countryside is incredibly racist and elitist and unwelcoming and these people aren't entirely wrong. I can't even remember the first time I saw a bird, I've always loved them. But it's kind of the same for the first time that I knew that our planet was dying. I literally can't remember the first time I heard about deforestation or fires or climate change or anything like that. It's always been something that I've been really aware of. I've been very lucky, I have travelled a lot and I've seen a lot of things firsthand. A couple of years ago I went to Brazil and I was flying over the forest and I could like see the forest fires and it's things like that that have really shaped the way that I think about things. Greta Thunberg and the Youth Strikes for Climate movement exploded before it all felt very niche to be talking about climate change, especially as a young person, versus after, where suddenly it had become the issue of a generation. There's so many other things that are constantly being prioritised over the environment. Essentially, instead of it just being framed as an issue to sort out, like, say, the economy, it's sort of framed as if you care about the environment, then that's a left-wing perspective, and if you don't particularly care about the environment, then that's a right-wing perspective. Unfortunately, I think I'd be quite unsurprised if there was very little progress this year. There's always this feeling of purposeful ignorance in a lot of these conversations politically. I just don't like Boris Johnson and I think that he's a terrible politician. Or no, he's, he's very good at being a politician and he's not very good at doing things for the good of the people. So I am half white but I'm also half Asian. I'm, you know, I'm not perceived as white, I'm, I'm Asian when people look at me. Growing up I was very aware of my race and very aware that there wasn't anyone else who looked like me out in the countryside except my mum and my sister. I never saw anyone who wasn't white. When I was 13 I decided that I wanted to run a weekend nature camp. I had loads of people sign up but one thing I noticed straight away was that they were all like white middle class teenage boys. So I decided that I was going to go into the city and just go and get some people uh, from like ethnic minority backgrounds and I was just gonna bring them out into the countryside for a weekend. It was really effective and lots of the feedback was there are just certain people who can't engage with nature, who aren't interested in environmental stuff, there's no point trying and the certain people was of course people who aren't white and that was just instantly disproved. These boys who had tried to be so adamant that they did not want to come, this wasn't what they were interested in had all engaged with nature and in some shape or form and had, had a really good time. The sector and various organisations were like astounded that we'd managed to do the impossible. So I ended up organising a conference, bringing them all together into one place, also actually getting people from these communities to come and tell them what the issues were. About six months after the conference, when just nothing had happened, no feedback, no change from the entire sector, um, I decided to set up Black to Nature because I sort of realised that they felt like they had done the work by coming to the conference and that was a, the very first tiny step in a very long journey. I was worried that this issue was going to sort of slip away and disappear for another 20 years. It's really difficult to overcome these very systemic issues because it's not just about breaking down preconceptions, it is about systemic top-down top change. I remember I became just increasingly aware that we were just hearing the same very small group of names repeated over and over in terms of talking about environmental issues. A pattern I've noticed in particular was that these voices that we were hearing were very white and very Western. And I just knew that there were so many more amazing people out there doing amazing things. And I felt like they deserved to be heard. So something I really wanted to do was create a book that was all just young activists of colour and especially promoting those indigenous voices which I think is so, so important. A really common thread with all the people I interviewed for my book was just how young they all were. Some of them being sort of seven or eight when they started. One of the things that just occurred to me while I was writing it was that that wasn't actually a good thing. In reality it's just really sad that so many of these kids it just felt like they didn't have a choice. But I think genuinely, like it's quite corny, but I felt really hopeful after having written this book because even though there are all these kids out there spending their lives trying to make things better, they're also willing to dedicate themselves to that and to try and make the world a better place and it is people that we need like that going forward.